Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man. Today we're gonna to talk about heavy metals and other metal contaminants that are in your reef tank. With the popular increase in ICP testing, like Triton or um, the other, the ATI tests, other ICP tests, we get more detailed reports than we used to get about what elements are in our tank. So you might get something like a Triton printout. And uh, on mine, for example, my tin is really high. It shows as a red indicator. Now, if, like my tank, the only element that you have is high is tin or only zinc or only iron, it's a little bit harder to nail down exactly what is the cause. Usually, when you have a high metal content of any sort in your tank, it's going to either be a contaminated additive that you're using, or maybe a food, um, or it'll be something corroding in our tanks. Um, I use Vortec pumps. I actually just replaced two of them because I noticed there was maybe a bit of rust or something around this stainless steel uh, rod in the middle of the wet sides. You can also have rusty hinges on your stand, or like mine, uh, I have a steel stand, and my stand itself is rusting. So to fix those things, we need to clean off all of the rust and then repaint it using something like POR15, paint over rust is what it stands for. It's just a, a sealant, uh, like a paint to, to do it, but you don't need to scrape off all the rust, which would be hard to do over your tank. So, like I said, I only have tin high in my tank, which makes it a little bit suspect that it's coming from corrosion. If your tank is high in a mix of things like tin, zinc, chromium, cobalt, these things, then almost certainly it's corrosion. If your tank is high, on the other hand, in things like aluminum or lithium, then you're probably gonna be looking at contaminated salt Maybe they're using really low grade reagents when they mix your salt. Or uh, you might have a contaminated bacteria that you're dosing, uh, like Microbacter, who knows, maybe it's contaminated at that batch. Um, or maybe a food item that you're dosing or that you're feeding could actually be high. My tank has been high in lithium ever since I set it up. Don't know why, I haven't seen it cause any trouble. And in doing a lot of research online, other people report high lithium and no problems there either. So once you've discovered that you have a problem, maybe you're seeing polyps not extending as much as they used to, or things are slowly dying, and maybe you've run an ICP test, like a Triton test, and you find that, well, you do have high zinc or high chromium or something like that. What should you do to fix it? Obviously, if you can trace it down to something corroding in your tank, like a pump or a hinge or a stand in my case, uh, you can fix those things by either replacing the corroding equipment in your tank, check heaters, pumps, uh, or like I'm going to do on my stand, we could repaint the stand with a rust preventative paint. Obviously you can't use a spray paint over your tank, that'd be a horrible idea, but that doesn't help you get rid of the actual iron or zinc or whatever it is that's in your tank. So to get rid of those, there's a bunch of different chemicals that you could possibly use. Um, things like Cuprazorb, will absorb copper and a lot of other things. Uh, they don't specify exactly what the other things are though. So there's also other versions of it, um, other things like Metazorb or uh, Triton makes something called Detox, but that is mostly targeted around copper and lead. Uh, there's also something from Pantaray called Pantalith, which is a, a, a fluid that you add and binds copper and other metals. There's also Roafos. If you have high aluminum in your tank, Roafos will bind aluminum as well as phosphate. So these are all things that you might be able to try uh, to get rid of various chemicals in your tank. You can also prevent corrosion before it happens by using a reef safe lubricant on things like metal shafts in pumps. When I replaced my Vortex, what I did was I coated the exposed parts of the shaft with Mollycoat 111, which is a sealant that's actually safe for marine environments. It's also safe for food. Uh, I wouldn't recommend eating it, but you could use it in a food environment. So that's Mollycoat 111. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it, I'm sure, in other places as well. That's made by 3M. And 
I just dabbed it on the exposed metal. And when I clean the vortex in a few months, I will add a little bit more, just a tiny bit will we'll do it. And that will just prevent uh, two things. It will prevent some friction because it's a, uh, both a sealant but also a lubricant that is a, like a thick lubricant that will stay on it. So less friction means less scratching at the metal, means hopefully less corrosion. And then it'll also seal the surface so that salt water won't be able to get to it, which will also hopefully help prevent corrosion. So I would recommend adding things like Molly Coat to your general maintenance schedule. When you pull out an impeller from a pump, look at it. If it has a metal shaft, is the metal shaft corroding? Is it still shiny and looks good? Um, you might consider using something like Molly Coat on it as well, just to keep it looking good. Uh, those will prevent problems in the future. And then also remember that heaters have a limited amount of life that they will survive, especially the submersible heaters. You wanna check them every year, every few months, just to make sure that they don't have any moisture in them. Because once moisture gets in them, it will turn to steam, obviously, when the heater is on, and that uh, just changes the pressure and sucks more water in, and, and then it's a, a repeating cycle. So I hope this was interesting. I'm really interested to know what you think about corrosion in your tank. Have you had any trouble with corroding pumps? Split magnets in Vortex are a great way to get iron and I think also molybdenum into your tank. Um, I'm really curious, if you had any trouble, let me know. See you next time.